In the TV show Succession, Logan Roy is a powerful man, able to insert his influence through his multi-billion dollar company. Waystar Royco, which includes theme parks, a cruise line, and a conservative news network. He is a self-made man who was successful because at every turn he chose to follow his gut, and also because he destroyed any person who dared to stand in his path. Logan Roy has little time for incompetence and even less for weakness from those around him. This fact is clear when he answers a question from his own son as to the reason why that Logan thought he would not be able to run the company. You're not a killer. You have to be a killer. In his world, Logan Roy is a leader who reigns with an iron fist. That's what makes the premise of the show Succession so interesting, much like passing down the birthright to the throne in medieval times. How does that transition of power happen, especially when the current king, despite aging, shows no signs of giving up his authority? The series shows this conflict as Logan Roy wards off efforts by his competitors, the government, and even his own children to remove him from his throne, striking at any moment that he shows signs of weakness. The premise of the series also reveals the underlying issue with Logan Roy's leadership. Logan Roy relies on transactional relationships with all of those he surrounds himself with. This includes employees, advisors, and even family. All of these people know that their relationship with Logan Roy goes only as far as they can provide value for him in one form or another. Unfortunately for him, the environment goes both ways, which is why the moment that Logan Roy shows any weakness, people see it as an opportunity to knock him from his pedestal. It is fine for leaders to have high expectations of the people in their organizations, but the most successful leaders form bonds with their people that go beyond the results that they can provide. Those leaders that build deeper connections create organizations where people feel safe enough to have new ideas and be inspired, as opposed to those who work at Waystar Royco, who have to constantly look over their shoulders. In fact, in the pilot episode, we see Logan Roy abruptly fire his COO of over 30 years by informing him right before they were preparing to get on a helicopter that a press release was coming out naming his replacement. Later in the series, we see Waystar Royco under investigation by the federal government due to allegations of covering up misconduct by employees, including sexual assault. Logan Roy felt the walls closing in on him, but he still found a path to escape the blame for these scandals. He convinced his oldest son, Kendall, that he would have to take the blame and tell the authorities that Logan had no knowledge of any of the misconduct. He framed this to Kendall as the only way the company could be saved and likened it to the Incas sacrificing their children to the sun god for the good of the people so the sun could rise again. Unfortunately for Logan, his son realized the transactional nature of his relationship with his father and decided to turn Logan in instead of falling on the sword as instructed. This is the day his reign ends. Logan Roy made it clear to everyone in his organization that every single person was expendable. It was apparent that his actions were more than simply holding people accountable. As soon as a person was no longer of use to Logan Roy, they would be cut in a cruel and unfeeling manner. It was a message to all in the organization that no one was secure, no matter how much you had done for the organization in the past. These kinds of actions by a leader create an environment where people do not feel safe enough to fully commit themselves to the success of the organization. Everyone understands that they need to continue watch their own back, or they might be next. This is why Logan Roy's leadership created many enemies, both from outside and within his organization. We see this as the audience due to the simple fact that every season there's a new plot to remove him from power. The reason that he remains in command until his death in season 4 is not due to the love and loyalty of his people. In fact, the very next episode after he dies becomes a transparent and shameless grab by everyone in his circle for either whatever money or power they were able to gain from his passing. His success was due to his skill as a brilliant tactician. The series Succession demonstrates what could ultimately be considered the success of Logan Roy, as he was able to snatch victory out of the jaws of defeat time after time. I instead see it as a story of a leader systematically getting in his own way and creating more problems for himself through his overly harsh solutions to both real and imagined threats to his power. Leaders who operate the same way as Logan Roy by ruling through fear will artificially cap the ultimate effectiveness of their organization. When people People find themselves in a situation where they're scared to make the wrong move, when they know they are completely disposable, they will not be able to reach their potential. People in that situation will only go as far as they are forced, not wanting to act outside of direct orders. This creates an organization where self-preservation is the overarching motivator, not purpose or loyalty. Leaders who choose to lead like this often tell themselves that they simply have high standards and will not suffer incompetence. 
I'm here to tell you that there's a better path for leaders to achieve organizational excellence. Leaders who take the time and the effort to form real relationships with their people. Relationships where they're seen as more than just disposable tools. will be able to connect to them on a deeper level. I promise that as a leader, if you develop relationships with your people beyond that of a transactional nature, if you value them, you will have more than authority. You will have loyalty. Something that Logan Roy was never able to acquire. All right, I have a challenge for you from today's lesson. I want each of you to answer the question, what is something that you deliberately do to develop real relationships with your people? Make sure to put your answer in the comments so that we can all learn from each other. Till next time, keep on learning. Thank you for watching. Much of what I go over my lessons can be found in my book, Mission First, People Always, which is available for purchase through the link in the description of the video. If you enjoyed today's video and want to watch more leadership lessons, then be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel.